Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. In this video here, it's really uh, another reason why I sold my ASI Air devices and moved everything to Nina. Uh, the overarching reason is there came a point where my needs exceeded what the ASI Air platform could deliver, and we all probably have different needs, so my needs are not necessarily your needs. Uh, the ASI Air is a fine platform, friendly price. Uh, there's a lot of things it can do well. I just needed more uh, than it could deliver, so I made the decision to move over uh, to Nina. And one of the benefits I'm going to share with you with regard to my Red Cat 51, I now have in my setup here the Wander Astro Mini V2 Rotator. And if I had stayed with the ASI Air, I would not be able to add a rotator into my image train. I know ZWO has talked about releasing one, but it hasn't come yet. So, uh, but I now have the Wander Astro Mini V2 Rotator in my Red Cat 51 image train. So I thought I'd just show um, a brief uh, video about its performance. It's um, 10 millimeters deep, so you need to take that in consideration with your back focus. The Red Cat 51 Gen 2 is very generous with how, where you set your back focus. Right now I have it about 56. Um, when I first got the Red Cat uh, a few months ago, I was using a back focus of 58.5. <clears throat> so here I think of about 56 right now, should be fine. Uh, I also ran this with a back focus of 49 and I was fine. As long as the lenses will focus, uh, you're good. It, it doesn't seem to be near as critical uh, where your back focus is uh, on the Red Cat 51 as it was with my Edge HD 8. Um, I have the uh, rotator in this orientation. This is the butt. This is where your power goes in. I'm powering it off of my Pegasus, uh, Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advance. And then it has a USB connection. Uh, I'm not sure where I'm running that uh, right now. This is a checkout to make sure, kind of like a dry run where... I put everything together, connect all the cables, go into Nina, make sure everything is functioning, and thereby uh, when I start to break everything down and pack, I'm pretty sure that I have all the cables I'll need that when I get out to the field, uh, I hope to be imaging on the night of January 18th, not quite the new moon. Uh, Weather-wise, there was no favorable place within the distance that I was willing to travel uh, that had good weather. So uh, I'm going out to uh, Arizona. It's supposed to be a Bortle II site. I'll do a video on that uh, site uh, after I uh, visit it and uh, spend some time there. All right, so let's move the rotator. Let's rotate. So here we are on the desktop. Let me uh, disconnect the rotator. And now let's uh, bring the rotator up. Ah, okay, so right now, because I did not return the rotator to its zero position on uh, the last time I used it as part of my testing here, what we're going to do is we're going to move that to zero, I hope. And as I expected, Okay, now we're at zero. The thing is with this rotator, because of its geometry, 
And again, I don't know if I mentioned, I did, it was 10 uh, millimeters deep, but this is thicker. Um, I needed to orient this portion of the uh, rotator down here so I had enough room where my uh, connection to my guide camera goes. So, um, but wherever you start off with it, then you just define that as mechanical zero. So, so let's uh, unplug it or let's disconnect it here. Let's connect it again. And as you see, uh, Nina and uh, this little driver for the Wanderer Astro Rotator Mini V2 said it's zero. If it wasn't, I could set zero position by just hitting, hitting that button there. So, okay, um, hopefully this camera back here just kind of picks it up, but let's do 170 degrees. And um, so we're moving. It's uh, relatively quiet. Now, I need to be mindful of these cables that I have hanging off the back of the camera and the filter wheel. I'm going to have to manage that such that when I rotate, and I want to be able to rotate when I'm asleep, uh, you know, so I, I really want to programmatically automate uh, a night of imaging where I have a high degree of confidence that I can do the necessary rotations, I can do the meridian flips, uh, where I'm not going to get a cable snag or, or anything. Right now, my cables are a mess. I'll clean that up. Uh, when I get out to the field, I'll tidy everything up so the reduce the chances of cable snags and everything. All right, so there we are at, um, at 170 degrees. And then uh, maybe our next target was be at 35. Then the rotator would uh, move back. Now, my understanding is that Nina, if I select the, um, while well, it's moving there, if we go into options, and uh, imaging. So if you're already familiar with Nina, uh, you probably realize this, but um, one of the uh, commands that you can uh, put in here, or not command, but you can uh, help determine what your image file pattern will look like. And if you, lo if you look down here, uh, don't I have it that I put it in uh, camera? It's bigger. Stats, gain. Binning. Set exposure time. Oh, this is my Red Cat 51. I haven't done this yet. So what I would do is I would uh, I would use this uh, this pattern here. And maybe we'll put it in uh, light. Uh, we'll probably put it in right here. And what I'm going to do is rotator. Now my files will have the rotator angle written into the file, uh, the file name, and therefore if I rotate during the course of the night, I can go back and capture my uh, flats and uh, be at the proper orientation when I'm collecting my flats for each of the sessions I might do during the course of a night. Uh, where the rotation angle was different and that way I can uh, do my flats and uh, flat darks. So I don't know is there really much more uh, to add? Again the uh, Wander Astro Rotator Mini V2 it was uh, roughly 
with tax living in California, it was $487 and some change. I purchased it via AliExpress. Um, I'll put a link to a discussion on cloudy nights where there are several um, rotator users, Wanderer Astro uh, rotator users, uh, talking about uh, what their experience has been uh, with the rotator. Some of them got on earlier, like in 2020, 2021, when the software was maybe, uh, the drivers and everything were still being uh, developed. Uh, everything I can see right now, it's pretty solid, but until I get it in the field and use it. And then the other thing I need to understand is how to use the framing assistant in uh, Nina to set the proper uh, angle uh, for framing and bring that into my uh, sequence, imaging sequence. Uh, right now I'm at zero, mechanical zero, I have the long edge, the horizontal edge of my 294mm Pro uh, horizontal as opposed to vertical. Um, so these are just kind of the, what I got to learn, what is the procedure, what should the orientation of the sensor be, should it be straight up uh, when the scope is in this position here, you know, so these are just some of the things I'll learn, but you know, that's the fun part is learning something new. And, you know, I'm uh, going to use some of the dark night uh, to do some of these things, unless there's a way I can determine that in advance. So I got a little bit more research to do in those type of things. So, so yeah, the ability to use non ZWO uh, third party uh, components or, you know, or, or devices is uh, another key reason on why the ASI Air platform uh, was no longer a good solution for me. And uh, I'm looking forward to the uh, new micro focuser I'm going to put on my Edge HD8 to replace my ZWO EAF. I'm going to put the Prima Lucci Lab Isato two inch, a low profile focuser. And then maybe late 2024, early 2025, I'll add the, um, their uh, rotator on there because I'll be putting a camera on there that will have a rectangular sensor. Uh, imaging with the ASI 533MM uh, Pro and its square sensor, you know, framing is, you know, I don't even think about it because everything's kind of in frame, you know, it's square. I can just rotate it or whatever. But once you get into a re rectangular, rectangular sensor, uh, you got to be a little bit more mindful of uh, getting the proper framing uh, or at least one to your liking. All right. So if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up as always like share and subscribe. And I just want to reiterate the ASI Air is a great platform if it meets your needs. So, you know, uh, price friendly and everything. But there may come a point where your needs exceed what that platform can deliver. I don't know what the ASI Air platform roadmap looks like for them to add more features. Uh, you know, for me, I wanted better guiding tools. I can use the full PhD2 uh, set of tools. I just downloaded PhD2's a new release. Uh, they say they made some enhancements to their um, uh, calibration tool set. So I'm, I'm looking forward to checking that out on this trip. Uh, so again, it just all depends on what your needs are. And our needs range all over the place, I'm sure. So whatever is appropriate for you, it's your money. You use what you think is best for you. For me, I had to move off of the ASI Air and Nina is the place. Uh, tremendous amount of capability with Nina when you think about all the plugins that are available to enhance, uh, uh, you know, what you need to get done and everything. So, all right. If you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. You know, as always, uh, like, share and subscribe. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, there's a link in the uh, video description you can buy me a cup of coffee or you want to make a small donation 
via my PayPal to help support the channel. Uh, there's a link there. Uh, no pressure, just thought I'd let you know it's there. And other than that, I hope you're looking forward to some good weather here for January New Moon. See you next time.